kind of, well, we are going to be focusing on, on ministry, missions, but we're also going to be looking at how women are a huge part of that, and that society differentiates, but God doesn't. Um, and, and the fact is this. Even throughout the history of the church, the gospel has been used at times to push people down, to, sell, to separate people, or to divide people. And, and the fact is this, this is not how God ever intended for his creation to operate or to be. We're going to start by looking at that a little bit today and, and looking in the, in the beginning of, of Genesis. But one of the exciting things about this ministry that we were just watching about is they're empowering women in the Horn of Africa to minister to one another. And in a world and culture where there are very large walls d dividing male and, and female, there's a lot of barriers that are put up. For women in, in, a, in a world like that, this ministry is empowering them with the gospel to share it and to build up one another and to teach one another and to transform and change their communities. We don't have to look for, far when we turn on the, the TV and the news to see all the, the brokenness in the world around us. But the fact is that's not how God intended for his creation to be. Today we're going to be looking at God created them. The passage I'm going to read, I'm reading it out of uh, the NIV. I really just like the, the, the way it laid out the words and, and what it said, and it really spoke to me as I was bringing this together. I've known what I wanted to put in this, this message this morning and where I wanted to go. I wasn't sure of how I was going to get there or exactly where God would lead me in it. And as I finished up yesterday morning on this, God just really just brought everything together. Because I'll be honest with you, there's a time in my life when I looked at Scripture and thought, well, only a man can do that. But as I have grown, as I have gotten deeper, if I, as I've discovered more of who God is, and what he intends for me and my life and for us as one another. And as he has brought women into other ministries I've been around and ministries I've been a part of. When I left Louisiana, I was in a, a small church there and I'd been there just over three years. We'd gone from about 12 to 18 people to around 45 and as I was leaving, I told some of the, the leaders there that your next pastor is already here. You have an ordained minister in the church. And she is more than capable and she has a heart and a passion. You see, she had a, a ministry already going that had over 85 women that were involved with a, a small group ministry that she was leading. But one thing I learned in Louisiana is cultures are different. And for about six months, they did not agree that God was leading her to lead the church. But as they went through the, the seeking and discovering God's will, they put her in place to be the pastor of that church. That church is still thriving and growing today. But I'll be honest, there was a time in my life when I just was like, no, why? Because that's what I wanted to feel and that's what I wanted to believe. But as I got into the Word and got into Scripture, and we get and see that God will put people in our lives at every level that will teach us something about who He is. God will put people in our lives that they don't even know Him, but they'll reveal Him to us through them. God is seeking those who are seeking him. And those who seek him, he will empower to make a difference. 
no matter their IQ, no matter their gender, no matter their struggles that they have in their lives. You see, we all have a purpose. We all are unique. Each and every one of us is different. And I'm sure many of you are just glad you're not like me. But we all are equal. And I mean, we're all equal. You see, that's the difference about Christianity and every other belief and religion in the world. We have intrinsic value because of who our Creator is. We have intrinsic value because God so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son. So whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. Because it's about Him and not about where I was born, not about how smart I am or how strong I am or how rich I am. But it's about who my Creator is that I love is. In Genesis 1, 26 through 28, it reads this. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky. We are created in the image of God. Male and female alike are created in the image of God, and we have been created with a purpose. And God has put us over his creation. He has given us immense responsibility. To watch over the world that he has blessed us to be in. over the livestock and all the wild animals, the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. We're responsible. We're good. God is going to have a conversation with us about were we responsible about how we lived? Did we take advantage of the opportunities that he gave for us to minister to one another and to take care of the world around us? I honestly and truly believe that Christians must be environmentalists. Because that's what Scripture is telling us right there. We have a responsibility. We have responsibility to bring ethics in every part of our life. From how we run our farms to how we, we do whatever God has put us in in our lives around us. And we must let him lead and guide us in that. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in numbers. That last part's my favorite part because of what it means to be fruitful and re- increase in numbers. God is a loving God. He has created the world and He has created man and women to be united in marriage and to be fruitful and multiply. This is the, the first part in Genesis where God is explaining creation. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Balance in purpose. So here in Genesis 2, 23 through 25, we see a a more extended telling of of how God created man in his image. And then after God has has taken man in, from one man he has taken and made woman in two out of one, both being in the image of God. 
The man said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. Adam and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. That's explaining right there that they were in perfect harmony and balance. God's creation at this point is completely how he intended it to be. There's no war, there's no strife. There's no misunderstandings. They're both naked and completely comfortable. Their relationship with one another is perfect. Their relationship with God is perfect without blemish. God comes and walks in the cool of the day with them and just, they just... Can you just imagine? You have no wants, you have no, because everything is just perfectly balanced. You don't feel any negativity, you don't have any emptiness in your life, everything. There's no pain, there's no stiffness, no, you're doing your job, you're going to work, and it just makes you feel even better about yourself. And ultimately you're in a, you just, You and your wife are one with God, and it's just perfect. It's the Garden of Eden. It's just perfect balance. And then that balance is lost. And sin sin changed everything. Romans says it so perfectly. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. She also gave some to her husband. It's talking about the fruit from the tree. Who was with her? I want to make it very clear. Just because you're with someone and you let them go first doesn't mean you're not at fault for what's taking place. Okay? Okay? Men, you don't get to blame women for the sin in the world. When we let someone else make a mistake that affects us, and we let them make that mistake, we don't get to blame it on them, because we were a part of it also. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they realized they were naked, so they sewed fig leaves together, And made coverings for themselves. This is a husband and wife who had no shame. And when sin entered the world, they looked at one another and they hid from one another. And we've been struggling in relationships with one another ever since. If she knew everything I did. If he could see me for who I really was, he wouldn't love me. I could never be enough. And they had shame. And they hid from one another. And we've been struggling in relationships with one another as husband and wives, as brothers, as sisters, as co-workers, as neighbors ever since. Because sin brings division. And the saddest part of it It wasn't just with one another that they were ashamed, but they felt shame 
and were separated from the relationship God intended for them to have with him. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord called out to the man, Where are you? I knew what happened. He knew the division that had come into his creation. And it ripped it apart. And as we continue on, if you read through Genesis, if you read through the Old Testament, you see just the, the fraying and the brokenness of humanity because of sin. We see God continually trying to, to get right with his creation, but, but it just... We can't seem to do it. We, we still have pride. We still have selfishness. And it comes in and it separates us from one another. It separates us from, from God. And we destroy one another so we can feel good about ourselves. There's a, a brokenness that came into the relationship between Adam and Eve. And it was nothing of what God intended it to be. You see, when God separated Adam and Eve, he gave each of them attributes that they both needed to be complete. And before sin, they worked as one together. But when sin came, it divided, and they had those attributes that were different, and it was used to separate them. And men... Mankind and man being more powerful use their strength to push women down, to push children down, to push one another down who are the weakest. And we have slavery, we have chauvinism, we have people that that believe they can take what they want because they have the power to do it, whether it's through riches or through strength. When we read through Scripture, we just see that playing out time and time again. We continue that God is trying to reach out and bring humanity back into man. Grace and hope restored. Did I skip? Right. Can you put it back on that slide, Abby? Grace and hope restored. No amount of lambs being sacrificed, no amount of rules and religion could make man right but there's this beautiful passage in Galatians that shows us and tells us what God has done for us that God is working to restore humanity back to the garden back to paradise and we have that through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior so in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. You understand how powerful of a statement that is? In Romans it tells us all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. To be a child of God is saying you are right with God. He's holding you in his bosom. He's protecting you, watching over with you. He's caring for you. Think of the story when the prodigal son comes back to his father and he runs to him. His son who is stinks really bad. He'd just been taking care of pigs. 
And he'd been eating their slop. And he's coming home just to be a slave to his father because he knows his father's slaves are taken care of better than he was living. And he just wants to be a slave to his father. And his father sees him and runs to him, puts his loving arms around him. Calls for a feast, puts a robe on him, puts a ring back on his finger, restores him back to what he left. This is what that passage is saying. So in in Jesus Christ, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you, who were baptized into Christ, have clothed yourselves with Christ. Jesus Christ is that robe that the Father has put around us. There is neither Jew nor Gentile. That statement for us, I mean, okay, right? It's kind of how we think. This is a huge, huge deal. When this is written, There was an immense great divide between God's chosen people and everyone else. God's chosen loved ones and the rest were left abandoned. But in Christ, there is no separation between Jew or Gentile. Neither slave nor nor free. Nor is there a male and female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And I understand that might be really hard for some of you in this room today. That all of us are equal because of Jesus Christ. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Jesus Christ is that loving robe that has been ripped has been draped around each and every one of us. That loving robe, that with it brought his blood that washed away the stink and the grime and the dirt of that prodigal son or that prodigal daughter that has come back to the father and said, look, I can't do it. I'm not good enough. I'm broken. Lord, I need you. When we confess and when we surrender to him and say, Lord, I can't do it. I can't be good enough. I can't be holy enough. I can't be religious enough. I can't avoid sin enough to be right, Lord. I need you to come and wash me and make me a new creation in Jesus Christ. And Jesus is that robe that has wrapped around us. And in that robe, we are sons and daughters of the creator of the heavens and the earth. Do you understand what that means? It means that that person who can't fend for themselves and work and make their own living is just as valuable as that person who's making enough to take care of a million people. It means that child who will never speak, who will never walk on their own, is just as valuable as the greatest athlete ever born. It means that that awkward individual that doesn't seem to fit in fits in with God's people through Jesus Christ. You see, that's how powerful the love of God is. That it takes all the brokenness 
that we have and that we've had, and it removes it from us, and it makes us right. And it's only through the love of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that any of us will ever be right and ever be whole. But because of that, because of God's love, because we are created in His image, each and every one of us has an equal share in the kingdom of God through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So we cannot look down on one another for the stature that they have. We can't look down on one another because of the color of our skin. We can't look down on one another because of the the lack or the abundance of points on the test. And we can't look down on one another because of the gender that we have been blessed with. For we are all children of the creator of the heavens and earth. And we are all called to be brothers and sisters in Christ. Working together to bring heaven to earth, to restore the garden through loving one another, through washing one another's feet, serving the sick, visiting the imprisoned, loving the unlovable, forgiving the unforgivable, and restoring the unrestorable. For that is what Christ did when he died on the cross and shed his blood and was raised for the grave. And that is what he is calling each and every one of us to do the same because we have received that same immense love and grace. And we are to reflect it, to live it, and to show it in each and every day of our lives. And when we fail to do that, we're called to confess it and to leave it behind us. And to move forward in Christ, our Lord and Savior. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you praise for this day. Lord, we ask that you will make each and every one of us an agent of change. That our hearts will be changed and transformed so we can change and transform the world around us by loving one another. By lifting one another up. Lord, may we never use your word to push anyone down, but may we always use your word to lift one another up. Lord, that we won't push people down so we feel closer to you, but that we will raise people up and we will be drawn closer to you as we do it, Lord. In Jesus' holy name, amen.